Okay, so Foundations Math 30, section 1.4, we are looking at present value. We're trying to find present value for investments. <coughs> so what is present value? Well, if you look in, uh, in your textbook, and this would be uh, on page 35 in your textbook, present value is defined as the amount that must be invested now, presently, to result in a specific future value in a certain time <coughs> at a given interest rate. So we're talking about um, you know, if you want to end up with $8,000 10 years from now um, to spend on a car or uh, something like that, make a, take a trip, if you can find at the bank or at some lending institution where you can make an investment and it gives you some kind of specific interest rate and you know that you want to you know, do this uh, eight or 10 years down the road, you can calculate then how much money you'd have to put in now to make that happen. Okay? And that's what this one is about. So how much money do I need now to have a, uh, a desired future value? All right. So here's a question where um, you know, we can look, uh, look at this and uh, figure out how to do that. So this is the example from your text. Ginny is 18 years old. She's inherited some money from a relative. She wants to invest some of that money so that she can buy a home in Milk River, Alberta when she turns 30. She estimates that she will need about $170,000 to buy a home. Okay, so not sure how much money she has uh, right now, but she wants to figure out exactly how much money she needs to put aside to make this happen. So how much money does she have to invest now at 6.5% compounded annually? So here's the information and we need to find what is a, a few, uh, present value. Now, the equation that we've been using for compound interest has been <coughs> this one, right? A, that is future value, equals P, the principal, times, oops, get this straight here, times 1 plus I to the power of N. All right? So that's what we've been using here so far. And future value we know, principal we know. Uh, interest rates, uh, that's per compounding period and number of compounding periods. Okay, now I want you to think about this as, th look at this P right here, okay? P is principal. Principal is the amount of money that you put in at the beginning, right? So that's exactly what we're looking for here in this, in this case. So if you think about present value as the principal or as the initial amount, we can use the same formula and P, which was principal, it can now be considered the same as present value, okay? So really, we're solving, we want to solve for P, all right? So how do we rearrange this so that we solve for P? Well, it's pretty easy, actually. If we divide both sides by 1 plus I to the power of N, then this will cancel off or divide off with this, and so we have our new formula P, principal or present value, is simply the future value divided by 1 plus I to the power of N. So we've simply rearranged our compound formula, okay, our compound uh, uh, I equation. Okay, So that means that we have to just fill in these other values and then we can evaluate. So let's see, how do we do that? Well. What information are we given? She's 18 now, and she wants this money when she turns 30. So that is? Okay, so it's going to be 12 years, and we are compounded <coughs> annually. So annually is once per year, so 12 times 1. So we have, and I'll just jot this down maybe over here. We have N equals 12. Is everyone okay with that? You guys get that? Okay. Uh, A. Okay, so she needs 170,000. So A is the future value in, uh, after 12 years, and that's 170,000. What else do we know here? We know an interest rate, right? So little i is the interest rate per compounding period, and because it compounds annually, we can just use that annual interest rate, which is going to be the decimal form, 0 0.065. Is everyone uh, on board with this? Everyone good? Okay, because that's important to get those values there. 
Once you get those values, you just plug them in, and your calculator really can do the rest. So P then is 170,000 divided by, and 1 plus this is going to be 1.065 to the power of 12. Okay? And on your calculator, you should be able to get your calculator to do that for you. 170, 23, divided by, and you might want to just use brackets there just to make sure, 0 0.065 to the power of 12, and bracket. Okay, does that look good? Enter, okay. So this money right here is the P value. So that looks like $79,846.09. So 79846 Okay. 79846.09. So that's the present value. That's what would be required today to put in so that she has her $170,000 in 12 years. Okay? So that is determining present value, which is really the same as principal, because that's the money at the beginning. Any questions about that? Okay. Okay, so that's important. That's example one. Um, I would like to direct your attention to the textbook there. Let's just skip ahead, okay, to page 39. Okay, we're just going to bypass a few things. I kind of want to go here to show you the key ideas. Okay? So let's just take a look at where we are so far. Present value of an investment that earns compound interest can be determined using this formula. So this is the one we just, um, we just discovered here. Where P is the present value or principal. A is the amount or future value. I is the interest rate per compounding period as a decimal. And N is the number of compounding periods. So this one is the key idea for this section. But um, here's some other things that we're going to need to know. If you um, look at some of the other examples, they ask you for such things as um, the um, rate of return. Okay, let's see if we can find rate of return or uh, look at this. Uh, the ratio, there we go. The rate of return we did last section, I guess. So to compare investments, usually the same term or principle, the ratio of future value to present value can be determined using this form. So notice, if you have A over P, this right here would be the <coughs> ratio of uh, future value to present value. Okay? So if you wanted to double, that ratio is 2. You find out what I and is or what N is or whatever. So that's the ratio of present value to future value. Um, that's another one that you're going to need to know. Okay. So as I mentioned, financial applications on a graphing calculator or using a spreadsheet are other ways that we can use to solve these, but we're going to we're going to work with the formulas for this section. I think next next section, maybe 1.5, um, I'll show you the financial applications on the graphing calculators here that you can use, and we'll be able to solve all sorts of uh, different things using that quite easily. Okay, but for today, um, yeah, I still want you to understand work with I and N and the formulas here so that you can uh, yeah so that you can figure that out uh, using these formulas. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, so page 38 has example 3 on it. And this question is asking for, A says, what is the interest rate when compounded annually will result in this uh, specified future value? So in this case, we're looking for solving for I. And of course, we can start with the same formula here. Okay. And what we need to solve for is I. Now, how we do that is a bit tricky. There's a bit of a twist, all right? So I want you to just kind of focus in on this. And again, if you uh, can't remember how to do this, once I show it to you, look back to this example, okay? But if you're given A and you're given P and you're given N and you have to solve for I, you're going to end up with an equation that looks like this where the I is missing, okay? Now, the tricky part is with this 18 here. So you get rid of the 15,500 first, you divide both sides okay, by that like they did over here, and then you're left with this part. 
the next step is to really is to get rid of this 18 as an exponent and the opposite operation of taking something to the power of 18 would be taking the 18th root okay that's the opposite operation so um, maybe I'll just kind of clip this into the notes and I'll just go over this a little bit with you all right so from here if you want to get rid of this power of 18 you literally take the 18th root and your calculator should be able to do this no problem okay so this 18th root cancels off with that power of 18 all right so what I want you to do right now is I want everybody to find this operation on their calculator where you can determine the um, nth root okay it'll be a little bit different for everybody's calculator but I'd like you to find that so you make sure you can do that All right, so just once again here, uh, on your scientific calculator, uh, you need to find this function. And here it is on this one. It's, it's the math function. And it's right here, number five. So you'll have something like this on your calculator. So when you do that, the 18th root, you should get 1.067. And so what does this end up to be? 1.067 equals. And then we still have 1 plus i. So if you subtract 1, Subtract 1, you get the interest rate is 0 0.067. And that would be 6.7% interest rate. Okay? So as long as everybody can do that, that's, that'll be something that you'll have to do as well. So find that function on your calculator. And um, yeah, that's probably the, uh, maybe the trickiest one you have to do. If you want, um, I added this to my notes here. It's not in your textbook. So if you want to write this down, finding interest rate, I'll just I'll give you a formula for it. Finding interest rate looks like this. Little i equals it's going to be the nth root, so whatever the n is. And inside here, you need to do a divided by p. And then outside of that, you need to subtract 1. All right? So that, if you want to write that down, that is the uh, interest rate formula right there that you, you won't see in your textbook. Okay, any questions? You guys got it? Understand? Okay.